Okay, I'm back. And before we start heading off to do the tutorial again, I just wanted to see if there was any questions anybody in chat had, um, any comments that you would like to uh, mention, or ideas that you've had for your own games. I'm hoping that this tutorial series will inspire you. Um, and feel free to chat um, because it shows up because I am neat. So everybody can kind of read the chat on the stream. Um, John, that idea that you had about making the shields the way that you uh, suggested was perfect. I couldn't think of a better way. John's an idea man. Nobody really knows that about him, but he's definitely an idea man. Uh, once everybody's back, we'll go ahead and start the stream. Um, Curse of Strahd is a really fun game. That's one of the reasons why I'm running it. I know it's an older module, but uh, a lot of people have a lot of fun with that. And uh, I'm very excited to be hosting it on the channel. Back. I have to do something real quick. All right. If everybody's good to go, I'm good to go. Just let me know. I'll wait for everybody to get back so they're not missing anything. Um, with Curse of Strahd, uh, that's always been one of my favorites because I played the old Ravenloft setting. Is there a module that Wizards of the Coast has released that you guys particularly enjoy? Um, because another one that I'm thinking about running is the Tomb of Annihilation. And what, what are your guys' opinions on that, too? And we'll go ahead and give everybody five more minutes before we move on. Yeah, TOA is pretty extensive. That is true. Um, it's definitely going to be one that I'm going to pick my players carefully and let them know this is a long one, so buckle up because there's a lot to it. But I, I really love that about Tomb of Annihilation because I think with Curse of Strahd, I've run it twice, and both times my parties ended the campaign right around level 8, 7... Uh, with Tomb of Annihilation, it looks like a lot of them, they end up going later. Yeah, Ravenloft back in 2E is what I played. And that's why I love Curse of Strahd, because they kept the original campaign as much as possible, but then also added to it. So there's more to it. So if you did play Ravenloft back in the day, at least you're also getting more content as well. And I was very surprised, because I own the physical copy of Curse of Strahd, and it, it's not a very big book, but there's just a lot to it. I think with that being said, we will get back into the design of our overlay. So, here we go. Oh. Hmm. What, what, what? There we go. Your name is so long, John, you made me realize I have to move the newest follower text over. Okay, so here we go with the stream. Ha 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 ha, John's all laughing. Alright, so now we've got our roleplay rolling screen. We love our cursed forest that we did. Let's use it, because I am a creature of consistency. And 
There is one difference to this, and that is for this campaign, I'm going to be running Fantasy Grounds. So I'm going to open Fantasy Grounds up real fast and kind of get an idea of how many pixels I'm going to need for the uh, chat box. So we'll open up Fantasy Grounds. It'll take a minute to load because I have all of the books, and for some reason, I'm really anal about having them all loaded. So it always takes a little while to start up. Oh, yeah, it would help if I actually hit play. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm good at computers. Uh, I will load the online Saturday night, or online Saturday game is what I'm going to be doing for Strahd. By the way, for those of you who would be interested in watching, we will live stream it on Twitch, and I will local record it and put it on YouTube. Um, I'm probably going to... We, we've decided maybe 12 or 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Saturdays. But that's the beauty. I'm going to be recording it live on Twitch so you can watch it live and interact. Um, and my end goal for doing these games on Twitch, especially with Beyond integrating into Twitch, if uh, I do accept tips or uh, bits, I might do it to where the donators can donate bits to players using a little hashtag like Penny Arcade does and give them inspiration. Because I think that would be funny to have the audience contribute to the player's success why are you way over there you need to be over here okay so the only reason why i opened the fantasy grounds up is so that i can go print screen and then open up my handy dandy paint paste go all the way over and i'm going to select this i'm going to select the die roller here and then move up the screen. Of course, because paint's stupid, I have to reselect everything. And then I'm going to cut, file, new, don't save, paste, file, save as. I'm going to save it in here as um, rolling. Uh, frame. Yes, actually, uh, that's the other thing. I might allow bits to me, like if you donate bits and put hashtag DM, and it gives me disadvantage points. Things I can spend to either give, uh, like Andre and I were talking about it, I think I'm going to name it Honor and Disdain. Give Honor points to the players, Disdain points go to me. And I can use them to give bosses advantages, or even strike disadvantages on my players whenever I want to because I'm mean. We can exit out of this now. I'm going to go to file and open. Uh, we are going to go to the other Curse of Strahd folder that I have, the overlay tutorial. Open my rolling frame and drag it into roleplay rolling. There. So roughly, I need a hole in my background that is about yay big. So what I've noticed is, there we go. Prob, you know what, I'm gonna put it down low. I'm gonna go back to main and I'm going to grab the Curse of Strahd logo which is, which layer is that? Is that layer six? Yes, it's layer six. So I'm gonna grab layer six. I'm gonna move it over to role play rolling and I'm gonna pop it right up here. Let's make it a little smaller. And then make the die roller center with it, just like that. And then I'm gonna bring the die roller down. All right, now I have my die roller. So what I need to do is I need to use my marquee select tool and probably start here and then just drag it down to there. And then I'm gonna press delete, which will create a hole 
move the die roller to the back and that's what it's going to look like. It's going to come through just like that. Now what's cool is I could take the Curse of Strahd logo and lower it so that it has a really cool bleed effect and it looks like there's a neat little shadow going on over there. Excellent. I like it. Um, and what will really happen is this is this little image is just a placeholder. It's going to be a hole just like that so that when I do game um, You'll see the die roller on the screen and everything will be live <laughs> I might even uh, at the end of this tutorial once I get everything I might even open up XSplit and Test it really quick just so that you guys can see what everything's going to look like all right, next up, we go back to the main page, and I'm going to select, this is where organization is going to save my life. I'm going to create a folder, and I'm going to call it Aaron. And I can cheat and hide. There we go. So this is the webcam folder for Aaron, so I'm going to put that in Aaron. There we go. I'm going to copy the name and put that also in Aaron. I'm going to go up here to Aaron's stats, copy those, move them down the list and put them in Aaron as well above the title. Then I'm going to snag, is that his token? Yes, I'm going to snag his token, drag that into the Aaron folder, and that's the Aaron folder. We'll close it. Now I'm going to create a folder and call this folder uh, Ethan. And the reason why I'm naming them after the players is because I don't need help remembering their characters' names, but sometimes I'm I'm going to address them out of character. So I want to remember the players' names just in case I haven't gamed with them before. And this is the webcam frame for Ethan. And this is the token for Ethan. I'll move Ethan's name down. We're going to go up to Ethan's stats and move that down. There we go and close the Ethan folder. Uh, the next folder I'll make is Dungeon Master. I know you guys really can't see it with the webcam. I couldn't minimize the webcam any more than I had. Um, so you're just gonna have to bear with me. And that's my frame. And then my name. There we go. We'll close that. And this just makes it all cleaner. And I'll move the folders so that you guys can see what I'm talking about afterwards. I'm going to call this one Mike. And I'm going to drag Mike's webcam frame down. His name down. Uh, he doesn't have a token yet, but I'm sure he will eventually. And I'm going to drag his stats down. Oopsie. There we go. And now I'm going to make another folder for Tanner. And I'm going to drag Tanner's. Just confirm this is his web frame. Yes, it is. Drag that one down. Oh, you know what? I think I messed up. I did. This needs to be re renamed Tanner. There we go. I'm going to move this into the Tanner folder. And then I'm going to move this one into the Tanner folder. But make sure it's underneath. I'm going to move Tanner's name down. And then I'm going to move his token down. I'm going to rename this one to Mike. And move that one down into his folder as well. So now I have a really, and this stats folder is empty, so I can just delete it. I have folders. There we go. I'm going to name this to logo. And then I'm going to create a folder called backdrop. And drop those into the backdrop folder. Now, backdrop has to go to the bottom. There we go. 
Now, the reason why I'm putting them in folders like this is because I intend to save this as a um, as a PSD, a Photoshop document, so that I can come back here and edit it whenever I need to. And having these folders, like Mike, I don't know his character name. I don't even know his last name, and I want to put his last name, and we haven't made a token for him yet. But when I do reopen the Photoshop file, there you go. All of his stuff is right there in the mic folder. Um, so for now, the beauty of this is that I can actually click on this. I've got the Aaron folder selected, and if I hit Shift and Alt in Photoshop and then bring it up to the Role Playing tab, it's going to bring everything. And it's going to copy it as a folder. Now I'm going to do the same with Ethan. Plop. Then I'm going to do the same with me. Oops, that's not the right page. With the Dungeon Master. Plop. Then I'm going to do the same with Tanner's folder and Mike's folder. So we'll do Mike's folder first. Plop, and as you notice, it puts it in the same exact space that I had it before. And then I'm going to select Dungeon Master, and drag, and plop. Oh, wait, I already did Dungeon Master. Duh. I'm going to select Tanner, drag, and drop. There we go. The other neat thing about doing it this way is I can take this webcam frame and shrink everything that's inside it down. And then put it up here. Do the same with Ethan's. And shrink everything about it down. Oops. You know what? I should actually... One thing I can give anybody when you're doing this is if you're going to shrink something down, look at the percentage. Shrink it down to the desired size right about here. And it looks like the percentage is uh, 83.82 for the width. We'll pop this up. And then I'm going to click on Ethan's. Control T. And go 83... Point eighty two and the height was eighty three point seven nine. Enter. You can also click the link and do it that way if you want. And eighty three point seven nine. Just so that it's the same exact size apply as Maria here who is Aaron's character. She's really cool. I really like Aaron's uh, tiefling wizard. Really neat. There. Now, when I zoom in all the way, remember, we're not at 100%. You can still see that on full screen, you're still going to be able to read those stats. It's not going to hurt it. Then I'll zoom out. We're going to grab Dun... Uh, actually, we'll grab uh, Tanner. No, Mike. I like to keep them all in order um 83.82 and then this side ended up being 83.79 because that's how sometimes the weird scaling works and hit enter and i'm going to put this one here come on come on pink lines there you go Excellent. I'm going to do the same thing with Tanner. Make this 83.82 and then make this 83.79. Enter. And then Tanner's one window is going to move right here to where it is center as well. For the Dungeon Master one, I'm going to do the same thing. And if mine's a little smaller, I don't mind too much. Um, 
it's not my show, it's the player's show. So that's just kind of my own personal view on it. I don't get a big head as a DM. And I'm going to move mine. I don't know why it's not saying, hey, this is in between the other two, but I'm going to have to eyeball it and just call it good. There we go. And this will be the screen in which the players role play. Um, now, if I open up paint and I hit paste, remember this guy? Um, I can add borders if I want. It does kind of seem like this uh, should have a border right here, this little section. So I'm going to go to Draw Shape, Rectangle Tool. The fill is going to be blank. The stroke is going to be black. And I'm going to make sure it touches the edge. Maybe even a little bit bigger than the edge. There we go. The stroke, let's make it a little bigger. Let's make the stroke not that big. Dear God. What was it thinking? Okay, I'm going to have to manually change this then to 8. There we go. Now I can make it hash marks, um, dashes. I can round the corners. Rounded corners are pretty cool. Um, I can choose to have it centered which is probably what I want and I can also choose to round the lines if I wanted to so I think I will I might change the stroke though to white no I am gonna keep it black but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that cool glow on it that we had for the curse of Strahd actually white glow doesn't look that bad There we go. I put a nice little border on it. Very simple to do. It looks really good. And I think that's pretty good to go. So what do you guys think? You guys think this is a pretty easy thing to do? Let me know in the chat. <coughs> if it's giving you any ideas, I'd love to hear them. If, if you were to do the stats, how would you do it differently? That'd be interesting to know. Oh, I know you could, John. You would all you would need is some time to think of some really creative ideas. And even your idea of flopping the shields around, I wouldn't have thought of that. Um this has been a really rewarding experience, even if it's your first time. I I'd encourage people to do a live video on it and just get some feedback. There we go. That looks pretty damn good. If I wanted to, I could include some pictures in here. I think what I'm going to do is, as the players, um, as they meet other characters, or maybe they collect trinkets along the way, I might add little images of the trinkets they have. Those of you who have played Ravenloft know that if you're going to take on the Cur or Strahd, you have to go get items beforehand. So I could put the items down in these blank spots next to my webcam here and uh it'll kind of give you a visual of what they have oh they have the tome of strad oh you know that's they have this item and it gives the audience a visual of okay so they only need one more item and then they can take on the curse of strad they need the sun blade you know they could change whatever they want um, you could keep it blank just like this i happen to like this because this picture really encapsulates the mist that you find in Ravenloft. I love this picture. So I don't, don't want to just block it all off with webcams. I want to be, or even just clutter the scene with uh, objects. But we are now going to move to our last pane, which is combat rolling. 
Yeah, the dark misty feel, exactly, exactly. And for this one, I am going to select my rectangle and my logo. And then I'm going to move those over into the combat rolling. There we go. It kind of looks ugly without the background. It's crazy how much that changes. And then I'm going to drag this one, plop it down, drag it under the other two. There we go. Now we already know. We can start moving faster, too, now that we know how to do this. We already know my die roller is going to be here. So I'm going to select this right here. And I'm going to delete that. And there we go. Now my die roller's in. Now, uh, for me, it's not too important to have a really big battle map. So I'm going to copy this rectangle. We're going to drag it over and make sure that uh, it sits a little lower. And maybe wide like so. I'm not going to do anything quite yet to it. This is just going to be a placeholder. Because right now, I have to go back to our role plane, select all of the player folders, including my folder, press shift tab, move all those folders into the group here. And there we go. I'm going to grab my folder and pop it up here in the corner. And now I realize it needs to be shrunk. I'm going to have to shrink it. Um, in fact, for a rectangle here, I'm going to change our rectangle and make it a little more squat. Because they don't need to have a huge view of the battle map. Like I said, the way that I DM when I'm doing battle maps, I make the maps fairly small uh, and zoomed in. So if they enter a room, I can drag the view in Fantasy Grounds to that room and keep track of the players. And even if they split the party... I can go, okay, Maria, it's your turn. Fantasy Grounds has this option where once it becomes Maria's turn, the camera on the map will center on her character. So I won't have to do anything. Um, but I will need to shrink my picture down a little bit. I kind of like the setup the way it is now. Let's shrink my webcam down to... Actually, you know what? Edit, undo. I'm going to shrink it down like this. I'm going to hold Shift instead of doing Shift-Alt. To right about here. Maybe a little smaller. There we go. Oh gosh, dang it! I did not. I did not keep track of the dimensions. Um, and I have to undo because I actually shrunk it too much. Always undo. If you shrink it too much, don't resize it because scaling up is messy. So, ninety-two point eighteen, ninety-two point two six. Aaron. We're going to make it 92.18 and then 92.26. Press enter. And then I'll move his apply. Yes, thank you. Thank you for checking. And then I'm going to drop his probably down here. Yes. So you could turn on in Fantasy Grounds auto targeting to where for the DM. Or the players. The players can freeform, like, go wherever they want on the map. But for a GM, I could say auto center view on player or monster. And then when I hit next, the map will snap onto whoever's turn it is. So that I'm not sprawling around the battlefield trying to find somebody. And for my audience, that's one of the reasons why I'm going back to Fantasy Grounds instead of World 20. For my audience, the camera will snap to whoever's turn it is. And everybody will be able to see what's going on. Um, the other thing that I'm also interested in doing, and I know a lot of DMs don't like to do this, but I'm thinking about making it to where I use the DM map on purpose for the audience and just have my players honor bound it and not say anything. Because part of the hilarious thing about Curse of Strahd is the traps, the creatures, the ambushes, the creepiness. I would absolutely love to have um, my players run through. My audience gets to see the GM map, but my players don't. 
and the audience gets to see when a player is about to bungle up and accidentally walk into a trap. You know, let's move Ethan's down here. And then let's move Aaron's down. Yeah, to see the goodness. Or like, they're like, oh, you know what? I'm going to go in this room. And then you just see that the room is full of creatures. And that that's the best part. I love that. I love playing games, especially the deadlier games. I love just having that feature where the audience can watch and just be like, <laughs> when they see a player walking towards their doom. There's a little bit of us that wants the players to live, but there's also a little bit of us that wants the players to suffer. I think everybody has to admit that. It's hilarious. Especially since if any of you have watched any of my games, I am a potty mouth... Uh, I, I would consider myself a good role player, but at the same time, for me, it is a game. You know, that's not something I've forgotten. And uh, I definitely intend to bring that spirit out exactly you have to keep the poker faces like when Aaron's like what bad could be in there and all of us are just like <laughs> that's gonna be really funny uh, Mike 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 I think that's good Tanner and we're gonna go oh not pixels 92.18 and then 92.26 just to keep the portions the same. There we are. Enter. Enter. Uh oh, spaghettios. Hmm. Dungeon Master is going to have to go over more to make room. And you know what? For the sake of argument, I'll also move him up. Aaron. Oh, you need to be lined up with the Dungeon Master. Sometimes it helps to actually line it up this way. And then... Bring it down. And actually, since the players have their icons there, I'll move them to the right. So that'll be Aaron's new spacing. Um, and then we'll move Ethan's window over to lock in with Aaron's. There we go. Mike, we're going to move yours over very close to me. In fact, our cams might touch. And then with Tanner, we can move his over to, say, There. Sorry, Curse of Strahd. You're cool. And I love your logo, but unfortunately, you're not cooler than my players. So we're going to shrink you down. Oh, actually, I have a better idea. We're going to move you over to here. Yeah. And down. Uh, we're going to take this first rectangle. Now, see, I done goofed. If you guys notice, I, I cut a hole in my backdrop too soon. I should have paid attention to that. But that's okay, because... I don't need to fret too much. If ever you make a mistake like I just made, you could just click on this and drag it back to combat rolling. Paste it down. Drop it to above the other layer. Delete the other layer. There we go. No harm, no foul. Whew. Yeah, ooh-wee, they're touching. That's right, Jazz. Don't cross the streams. Um, 
so now that Aaron's frame is good we got Ethan's frames good Tanner's and um, Mike's frame is good let's delete this and let's delete this so this centerpiece this is where the battle map will be if I ever open it and some games I don't some games they don't fight so I just stay on the combat non rolling and we'll delete that right there and then Mike's will stretch out to here and delete to here and then we'll delete this over here <coughs> here, here, I got the black lung pa There we go. Now, some of you might think, well, golly, Jabes, that's uh, that's not very centered. You're right. It's not, but I don't think it has to. Yes, yes, yes. So the bottom layer, uh, in fact, I will actually move this. The bottom layer is where I put the, back the background. Uh, it looks like Swiss cheese now, but that's where that was. So let's actually show that again. That's a very good point. Um... I'm going to copy this layer and bring it over to combat rolling. And what I did was I had it on the bottom. And then when I cut out sections, I was cutting it out of that bottom layer. Everything else is on top. And it ends up looking like this. So that's how you do it. And then once the work is done... I'll bring this back. Hmm, fine. You don't want to use the hotkey, then I'll delete you this way. Yes. There. So that's what it looks like when it's done. That looks pretty good. I'm not bothered by the fact that it seems like Aaron and Lokag aren't spaced out evenly. Um for obvious reasons I'm gonna have their little tokens there I think that's important the DM doesn't have a token all the webcams are the same size so of all the things to bother me that is not that is not one of them so I'm gonna go ahead and save this one save as and I'm gonna save it in the curse of Strahd overlay tutorial just to be good about my organization for those of you who just joined this is the we are role playing, but you're still making roles screen. Yes, there is room for Mike's pick. The way that I uh, did this with Tanner's pick and the spacing, if you look over on this one, there will be room for it. It will overlap a little bit, but it's not going to cover up any of the numbers. To give an example, let's copy Tanner's. That's a very good question, John. See, you know, you're asking all the right questions. And if we pop this into uh, Mike's real quick see that's not going to be bad at all that that doesn't even look like that bad of an overlap and if i really wanted to i could be like no this is tanner's webcam but even if it overlaps a little bit i don't think it's that big of a deal Heh, <laughs> that's what i did that's stupid Get out of here, Tanner 3. So there we go. Looks looks ferner. Er, fine. Uh, did I save this one? I don't know. I was gabbing. So I will save the roleplay rolling. Save. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to save. This one is main. Save. Okay. And now they're all saved. Since I'm done with this, I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, you know what? I actually have to export these images. Imagine that. I'm going to call that main. Always save, even if you think you don't have to. 
It's just a good habit to have. Save, save, save. You don't want to spend hours on a project and then totally get messed up. Um, and you know what I'll do is I might even just um, kind of build as I go live on the stream so you can see what the overlay will look like. It's going to be really weird, though, because of how I test it, but I think it'll be fun. File. Open. Or, no. File. Save. Exit. And then combat rolling file. Export. Export as. Export all. Combat rolling. Save. File. Save. Exit. And I'm done. These are all just pictures. So I will go ahead and save this cursed folder. Remember, we edited this. So we're going to want to save this as a Photoshop document. No, 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 no. File. Save as. Photoshop document. Curse Force 2. Okay. Done. No. Thank you. Done. Done. Yep. Done. Done. Uh, yeah. Let's let's save that. I might use that in a future game. That was a really good idea. Done and done. So we can exit out. Okay. So now what we need to do, exit out a word. Don't save. Thank you. You've served your purpose. Being my video bitch. We're going to drag this over real quick and click on the editor tab. And we're going to create a new page. I know it's kind of confusing with all the multiples. And we're going to call this Strahd Intro. Done. And in Strahd Intro, I'm going to add a source. Image. Add source. Add new source. Browse. I'm going to find that... Curse of Strahd tutorial. There's the introduction. Then I'm going to hit open. Done. Fills the screen. You guys see that? Well, yeah, it's black because I'm editing as I go. I'm showing you guys live what my screen looks like. Um, so you guys should see this. So now I'm going to add another source. Super easy on these scenes. I'm going to call this um, main. This is where all the main role playing will be done. And then I'm going to go add sources, image, add source. You'll hear me talking even though you can't see anything. Haha. -ha. Um, browse. I'm going to add main. Done. All right. So here's the main one. Now, what's really cool about this is I can also add a video capture device, add source, add existing source. I'm going to put it under the image. Oh, lordy. Let's actually shrink this down a bit. This is to simulate if I'm using Skype or another chat program. Obviously, I don't have one open at the moment. You want, I'm actually going to do it in mine. my box. There we go. Um, excellent. I like that. I like that. Okay. That looks good. And then drop it below. Blow it. So that's what it'll look like. Um, I can even... A lot of people, when they have their webcams up, they've got crap in the background. So you could even just make it a little bigger. And center it. Move the camera around however, however you need. Um, I could even add another webcam. And this is where it gets really weird because now you're going to be seeing me in doubles. 
And a lot of the times my players know when they join my games, I, I go, okay, it's going to take me about 15 minutes to get the cameras correct, set up, and everything like that. But then they could plop down. And now there's two. Oh, but that's the general idea. So we know that works. Uh, now let's move on to the, uh, I'm going to load up Fantasy Grounds real quick. Because this will make this very easy. Yeah, I was thinking that or like a cop sensor bar, you know. It'll be really weird to have Aaron with his shirt off and he's like, my character wipes the rain off of herself. And it's like, oh, oh, oh. Is this rated R? What, what happened here? And then we'll add a new scene. We'll call this one uh, Strahd Rolling Roll Play Rolling. Done. Again, you can't see anything. I know that. I'm still here, I promise. Add image, add source. Add new source, browse the files, grab the role play rolling, open it, done, there we go. And again, I can add my webcam, uh, video capture device, add source. And of course, if I'm in Zoom or Skype, I wouldn't be doing add capture device. I would just be screen selecting their webcam. Uh, add existing source, there we go. Bring it down. Pop it into place. Lower down, there we go. I've got Fantasy Grounds getting ready to start. It's loading, I promise. So what I'm showing you now is the general application of how you would actually use the overlay um, so that you guys can see what it looks like. Not trying to bore you with all the boring stuff, but this is an important step because a lot of people go, okay, well, I got my overlay or this person made me an overlay. Now, what do I do with it? So it's nice to have that um, to be able to see what I'm doing. Okay. And I'm going to open up a quick match map real quick. Um, Curse of Strahd. Maps. The Abbey of St. Mercovia. Tokens, I'll add some tokens on there real quick just so that you guys can see how this looks. It's not going to be tokens from this campaign yet because they have not been developed. All right, so now that I got that set up, I can go to add source, important. 
It is important. Um, actually, uh... and all of this, by the way, will be done when you're doing this, um, you know, outside of the game. You're not going to do this stuff while people are watching. So I can bring this over, drag it down below the image, move it, get it just like that, move my webcam up, grab the display capture and move that up. And if I wasn't in kind of, I'm kind of being sloppy about it. If I wasn't in as much of a hurry, I could just, uh, make sure everything's finely tuned. But, um, now when my players roll their dice and they decide to roll it using the physics roller that Fantasy Grounds has in it, hey, you guys see the roll. And then, of course, you know, their webcam will be here and here and here and, and over here. So it'll all, you know, they won't see any of the other stuff that I have opened. Yeah, I know, 19? <laughs> I must not be playing any of Andre's games. One, one, five, one. I swear it's laughable what I roll. So now let's add another scene. Uh, this scene's going to be called Rolling Combat. Yeah, definitely not challenge. Oh my god, you should see the first episode of Horde of the Dragon Queen. I was rolling just as bad, if not worse. I didn't roll as many ones, but it was pretty bad. And then I can add my webcam. Now, the beautiful thing about it is that when you're doing this, you only have to set it up the one time. Once everything's in their right place, it's really not that bad. And it, t it always takes some work. You know, everybody's like, oh, it's so hard. It's not hard. You just do it the one time. And once you're done with the one time, you don't have to do it again. I'm going to lower this down, and then I'm going to go to add display capture, add source. Um, there we go. Drop that below the image. Move it around. Make it a little bit bigger. Yes, yes. Not only while you have them open... But with my, I'm using OBS right now. Uh, I use XSplit for my games because it's it gives me a few more features. Like I can capture each individual webcam of Zoom or Skype. In fact, Zoom actually comes with XSplit codecs, and they're a little more crisp. Um, but right now I'm using OBS, and it's not that big of a deal. Right, like that, um, and then I'm going to add another source. Now, this is where it gets tricky, because I can crop this by going here. Crop. Uh, let's say crop 400. Five. Um... 1,000, okay, so probably 1,400. Nope. 1,200. 1,300? Okay, so 1,250. I can crop it by 1,250. Um, from the bottom, I can crop it by 200. No. 150. A lot of this is just playing around with it, honestly. And then the right-hand side, I'm going to do 100. Uh, 250. There we go. And then the bottom, I'll crop it um, 100. Yeah. Okay, so I have my general shape now for this display capture. 
I'm going to move it back here, just like this. And there we go. Then I'm going to add another display capture. This one's going to go under the other display capture and it's going to be smaller. Smaller. Okay, here we go. So everybody will have their their token or their webcams up. Um, I'm going to be obnoxious here and just kind of give you a final view of what this will look like. And it's going to look freaking weird, but whatever. I'll put this in Aaron's box. Hey, <laughs> that's dirty. Drop down below the image. Um, add video capture device, add source, add existing, and I'm going to shrink this one down. Yeah, the important thing with uh, OBS, though, a lot of people don't realize this, is you can't just click the red X in the corner like you can XSplit, because XSplit will go, hey, would you like to save your project? You always want to go file exit, and then it auto saves. I kind of feel like with all these webcams of me, I feel like that scene in Waterboy where all of the Henry Winkler heads go over the football players and they're like, water sucks, it really, really sucks. down bingo and finally one last one So with OBS, though, I will say uh, that's different than XSplit is you are going to want more prep time. You're going to want to be able to do all of this. It takes about 10, 15 minutes before your game. But then once you're done, you have this. Um, so I can see here. Now, what's cool is you can't see my cursor in Fantasy Grounds. But if I want, I can move the map. You know, Abbey of St. Macovia. So, the players can move their tokens, the monsters can move their tokens, they can all make rolls. I could even, uh, whoops, open up a character sheet real quick, and she could take an action and cast Fairy Fire, bam. She could drop that so that people can find out what it says. She can actually cast the spell. And then roll her dice. If I click on Fairy Fire... She can go BAM! So, she... Save versus uh, Fairy Fire, Dex DC 10 magic. So, the dexterity that somebody has to beat is a 10. And then the the um, the effect is actually that you grant advantage to units, and then we can explain why, and that's because it makes them glow for people who don't know the spells. But yeah, so that's basically how this layout would work as an overlay. Yeah, 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 absolutely. If I <laughs> if I actually was laughing my butt off because they're fighting Strahd, 
and I wanted you guys to see it. I could pop this up in the corner while they're fighting him, and you guys can see all of his stats. I'm going to take that away because nobody needs to memorize that. But yeah. Uh, yeah, but when you made your character, you when you put your spells in, Aaron, you actually uh, put Dex DC 10, and you're supposed to modify that. So. so this window comes up, and it says type Dex, Dexterity plus what's your bonus, and then, you know, whatever your uh, spell save DC is. 8 plus ability, proficiency, yes, that's what it would be. So the stat for wizard is intelligence. There we go. And now when I click on it, it says that this particular roll is a dexterity 12. Wait a minute. <laughs> it forgot to add the proficiency bonus. So I can go in there and change that. Bonus is two. Oh, no, no, no. That is right. It's eight plus ability plus proficiency bonus. So it's eight plus two is ten plus your imp bonus is twelve. So yeah, that did fix this. So the dexterity DC is twelve. Because of your spellcaster's ability. Alright, any questions? Don't be shy. You have... Yeah, there you go. Yeah, John asked as you went along, if this is something you guys enjoy, this is definitely something that I can do on the regular. I can do overlay tutorials, uh, Photoshop token tutorials. I could do animation spell effects tutorials, which I hate those because they use a lot of CPU. Um, I might even do like GM prep videos on Twitch if that's something that everybody's interested in. But a lot of it just has to do with working as efficiently as possible. I think that's the number one thing that people have a hard time with is... Yes, what is it, Gedwin? What's your question? Yeah, once, so when I do the original document, I was like, and I put all of the files and everything into one big blob and got it where I wanted, but then I condensed them all into folders for each character, and when I was making new scenes, I just had to copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, and the reason why I put them into folders is I can resize the folder and shrink it, and it shrinks everything in that folder down, so it's all proportioned. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying, Gedwin. Little, I'm a little late on the uptake there. <laughs> well, thank you all for joining. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and let people know um, if they want VODs. You know, if you know of somebody who wants an overlay VOD, tell them that they can go to my Twitch channel and get it. I'll post the link in Dork Vision and some of the other websites. Um, if there's a token tutorial that people want done, definitely, you know, point them to that one. Those... Any VOD only stays up for 14 days. I will be working on downloading them and putting them on my YouTube channel, but this was an exercise. I didn't know how well it went would go. It actually ended up being pretty well. But overall, it took me 2 hours and 30 minutes to make all of those overlays, and that includes the break and finding images and resources. I didn't have anything saved. We just went to Google and downloaded a bunch of crap. So... The good news is, is when people are like, oh, I got to make tutorials for my game. How long is that possibly going to take? You could say, well, honestly, if you're making over overlays for your game, probably two hours. Two hours is how long it should take. But it doesn't actually take as long as most people think. And it's not as terrible as most people think. I think the reason why I have kind of a one up on a lot of people who make overlays is because I got Adobe certified when I was in school. So I know a lot of the dirty little shortcuts, hotkeys, and like the folder technique. I know a lot of shortcuts with Photoshop that help 
in streamlining the process. But if you like what you saw, make sure that you hit the follow button because there will be more roleplay theory and roleplay craft videos coming out. Uh, I'd like to start Crystal Strahd next weekend on Saturday. I have to check with my players. After that, we're going to be doing our Fate Accelerated game, which is a modern day sci-fi that I've got a nice surprise for. The players don't know what the setting is. They know it's modern day, they don't know it's sci-fi. They know it's based off of a franchise, but they don't know which one yet. So that's really fun to pull off. And then uh, I've got Ashes to Ashes posting this week on YouTube. We're going to start streaming that now that Nate's got his computer back. I'm going to get the Dust to Dust crew back together, and we're also um, going to be doing Stars Without Number next weekend. It's a lot, but I'm trying to do it where I'm only running one game each day, and that'll give people all the breaks that they need and still provide content. So if you have any questions, let me know. You can find me on Facebook or find me on YouTube. Until next time, bye-bye.